Greetings everyone. This is going to be a mystical contemplation on the beauty and power of letting go. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I am drinking one of my elixirs that is specifically for the heart, for the joy, for the bliss of appreciation, celebration of life in all its variety. And just a few moments ago, I heard the title, The More You Let Go, The More You Receive. And I wanted to do this live stream to share with you these little gems of mystical wisdom that I have been discovering on my path. So whether you are going to use this as inspiration or validation or confirmation, maybe you are discovering this on your path and in your life already, then it's just going to feel so good <laughs> that we're tapping into universal wisdom, right? And these, uh, this wisdom begins to nourish us and it begins to guide us. I've been contemplating on the power of letting go and really stepping into this state of being as an ongoing surrender to the wisdom of life. And for a long time, I thought I knew what surrender was. How did it feel in my body? Uh, how did it uh, look when it was unfolding in my life? Until this year, earlier this year, I had to surrender a project. I was holding a vision for a project and I was, I was working so hard in seeing it to come through. And life had its own plan and life redirected and asked me to let go of that project. And I remember I had this mental resistance and I had a resistance of the will and I wanted to see it happen. And then suddenly I woke up one day and all resistance was gone. And I felt no restlessness in the body. And I had an insight. I received the new definition of surrender. Surrender is the absence of restlessness. And it became a new uh, mantra for me. The way that I can know viscerally, somatically, that I truly let go is that I feel zero restlessness in my body. The <laughs> and this is a huge illumination because when you can find the sensation in your body, that becomes your um, something that you can lean on next time where your life is taking you through a process of letting go and you're like, did I let go? Am I still holding on? If I let go 90%, it's just as, it's just as much as I didn't let go at all. So how do I let go completely is when you scan your body and you find zero restlessness, right? You're not being torn apart. You're not saying you let go, but oh gosh, your identity and your future and your desires, everything is invested in this particular outcome. So surrender is the absence of restlessness. Gosh, it will be a chapter in, in a future book. So how does it work on the level of mystical wisdom? We go through these progressive um, leaps of consciousness, right? In our journey, in our spiritual journey, since we are spirits having a physical experience, this entire movie, this entire play, this entire sport of the goddess, if you study Hindu teachings, I've been recently deep into tantric teachings, literally translation of this universe is created for the sport of the goddess. The goddess is having a sport, a play, a divine theater. <laughs> Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Let's remember what this experience is all for. So when you progressively begin to remember 
the deeper thread, the golden thread of this reality, lightness comes back to your heart. You begin to laugh more. You begin to take more deep, sensual breaths. You begin to uh, just treasure every single day comes filled with enough learning and experience and surprise and wonder and lessons and opportunity and you begin to learn to live one day at a time and first wondering if you could ever sustain that is it possible to live one day at a time can i still be a responsible person can i still take care of all my can i still manage my my human experience while anchoring this consciousness this mystical consciousness that says, I am living in one eternal now. There is only now, there is only now, there is only now. And how I am able to track my deepening of, of this embodiment is less and less restlessness in my being. More and more ease around relaxation entire body mind and spirit begin to soften and when something softens and naturally expands it's whatever is rigid tends to stay in exactly the same size so in the mystical way of being if we desire to expand the new way we got to release the rigidity we got to learn to to keep our hands more and more in this position available to catch all the blessings receptive to all the miracles but not grasping them the moment they land in our palm not worrying oh my goodness am i able do i have the room for another blessing where there's enough for me right you you learning you're this letting go, this creating spaciousness in your spirit. So beautiful. I have found that every leap and expansion of our consciousness really changes the nature of our longing and our desire. And whatever the desire that was so urgent, the dream, the goal, the vision, right? When the Divine Mother and the Goddess touches our consciousness with her grace and we have an experience, you know, of Satori or Samadhi, oneness with all, it literally just upgrades everything we thought we desired. And our main desire is how can I be the most flexible, instrument in your hands great artist guide me lead me teach me show me so then our business ambition transforms as well if you are a spiritual entrepreneur or conscious business owner right i've met so many conscious business owners who are experiencing kundalini awakening i truly believe it's going to be a planetary awakening through kundalini through our sexual energy so more and more executives and ceos and you know people who run big corporations just receiving boom awakening of this divine fire and they're like what do i do do i just leave be leave behind everything what do i do well what happens is a reorientation of values a reorientation how we spend our time attention also complete upgrade of what is important so less and less we define ourselves with our accomplishments with our achievements with how many figures is our business bringing you know this conversation begins to fall away and you you just you just kind of develop a witness consciousness. You're like, oh, here I am, just trying to prove myself again. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> oh, here you are, holding on to your character. That's all right. 
that's all right, right? So you then you're expanding, expanding, expanding through softening. Hello, hello, beloved. You're expanding through softening, and then what's so beautiful about letting go is when we let go of what we think we must have, we actually create so much room for what is truly aligned for us to rush in. And when we let go of, of insisting, right? Or even like impatience, impatience is a tough one. Letting go of the need to know is a big one for me. Having a very naturally strategic mind. I love projecting things into the future, right? I like playing with possibility. I like to know what's the next six months is going to be about so I can maximize my energy, maximize my focus. But you know, the cosmic joke, especially this year, I was invited into this mystery of living without knowing and trusting my capacity when the knowing comes as a download from the field. I don't know why I always say download. It can actually come sideways. <laughs> so if you, if you receive downloads from the unified field, they can come from everywhere. They can come from here, from here, from behind you, from the, from the down, right? Because you're connected to the unified field. So my curriculum, and maybe this will be inspiring for some of you this year to let go of the need to know and trust my training and my skill set and my capacity so deeply that when the knowing arrives as an inspiration directive from my guides, I am ready and able to implement with so much flow and grace and the speed of spirit that it's like the Sufi dance is happening, right? So really profound. The, the goddess is asking me, can you let go of your need to know where I'm taking you? And my human self, who likes to think it's the doer, <laughs> um, it took a moment, it took, took a minute or two to embrace that assignment. But what I'm discovering, it's so much more incredible way to navigate reality. Because you will always receive what you need to know when it's time for you to know it. And when it's not time for you to know it, it's going to be veiled for you as a gift of grace. And when you don't know, it means you get to deepen your experience of exactly where you at and just love on the chapter that you're in right? It's so incredible to wake up every morning and to take it as your practice to bless everything that you have, to bless your life, to bless the country where you're in, to bless your house, to bless your relationships, and to declare to yourself, I have everything I've ever wanted. And that state of inner wholeness and inner completeness is the most magnetic state it's when we stop the seeking, everything we desire becomes revealed, becomes visible, right? It's a beautiful, beautiful journey. And I, I yeah, right? It's amazing. Uh, look at the two things that, two things that most people seek. Most of us seek uh, love and relationships. Then the second thing we seek after that is uh, abundance and money. The third thing that we seek is spiritual realization and spiritual peace. So it's love and money is two, two big things <laughs> we want more of. <laughs> we want them to stay or we want them to expand and we want to change in them, right? It's such a beautiful experience when we find that you know, the unity with the divine and letting go of these ideas of who we get to be with by when and how much and how soon. We let go of all of this 
and find our way back in the heart. I feel like the heart is a true temple. Beside Mother Earth, you know, one of my practices is in the morning, I wake up and I let Gracie, my cat, I let her out. So she goes outside. She loves being outside. And and what I do is I, I touch the ground. I touch the earth and I talk to Pachamama. And I say, Pachamama, thank you. Thank you for this new day. And thank you for the opportunity to touch your back and to feel your earthy ground nature. You know, this is a deep ancestral uh, shamanic tradition that says if every single person on this planet would wake up every morning by touching the ground and having a conversation with the Mother Earth, with Pachamama, we would all collectively come to awakening, right? So it's something that every single one of us can do Every one of us can touch the ground and to say, thank you, Mother Earth, for carrying me on your back. You know, something like when I saw this metaphor first time, I visualized Mother Earth is literally holding all us, all of us on her back. And that image never left me. You know, there's this profound gratitude. The earth is a sentient, conscious being who is also on her journey of ascension and evolution. And we are her eyes and her ears, right? It's amazing. So letting go <clears throat> is a liberating experience because the way that all the fruits all the beautiful gifts that come from that softening and releasing the plan that we have for our life. <laughs> you know, my only plan is every day, every day to show up for my practice. I deeply believe every single person must have daily spiritual practice. Um, to be grounded and to listen to the voice of the soul and to uh, move forward. But every single person has a unique psychology, unique um, likes and dislikes, the unique style, right? Some people are early birds, some people are late birds. So we each got to find a practice that works for us. As long as we have a practice, because a practice acts like an anchoring to this reality and um, so that's every single day I know that's happening there's this happening of my practice and when I show up for the practice I show up for a conversation with the cosmos and I let go of what I think gets to happen today and I say what wants to happen who the universe wants me to be in a conversation today. What really is desiring to express today? That's all letting go and letting a much bigger reality to move through us. And, um, and receive, you know, when we let go, what we receive, first thing we receive clarity. And the gift of clarity, the gift of seeing our life clearly, wow, I already have everything I've ever dreamt. Everything that we have right now, there was a time where this was an unreachable dream or something that we deeply, deeply held a prayer about. That's how the universe works, right? So this luminous clarity, when we let go of the need to know or the need to arrive somewhere, this luminous clarity floods our being and our heart begins to open in gratitude and appreciation. And when that happens, oh my goodness, there is joy. There is enthusiasm. There is inspiration, right? So gratitude and joy are so connected because when we're able to be content, like deeply satisfied exactly where you are, loving our life, leaning into our life exactly as it is and loving it deeper every day. There is this fountain of soul magnetism 
that opens up. And because we're energetic vibrational beings, our vibration, our energy goes first. So when we walk around with this heart of appreciation that emits this powerful waves of magnetism, we are always in synchronicity and we're always in flow. And then inspiration just naturally finds its way to us. It naturally comes. It's so beautiful. And then we receive absolutely everything we require for our soul's evolution, for our, um, for our experience, opportunities to serve, companionship that is aligned for us, right? Everything comes. It is absolutely magnificent experience. I have found this um, really magical this year. <laughs> Removal of resistance. That's right. Hi, hi, hi. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you, my dear ones, on this Thursday um, of the last week of August. It has been such a dynamic year, dynamic summer. I feel this was the best summer of my life with the amount of balance of having my own personal experience and deeply creatively express in service to my dharma. And I just really love this year. It's really powerful year, the energy of mastery and, uh, and devotion and really rising in all areas of life. So I wish you all a beginning of new season, which going to start in just a few days, the season um, of harvest. Also going to be very dynamic season, I can imagine, and the season of harvest and the season of returning back to our, to our projects, to what we are building, to what we are creating to our service, to our books and dreams and asking yourself, what is worth cultivating? What is worth building? What is worth strengthening? And also the fall will be a natural preparation for the winter where we will ask ourselves what I'm ready to let go and to trim the excess, right? So I love the seasonal wisdom as well. And here's to remembering that we are letting go not in the way of giving up, but because of the wisdom of knowing that we are part of the whole. And the whole is moving through us. The entire universe is moving through us. And it has a much bigger intricate design that we are part of if we exist right now. And to cultivate this prayerful attitude, um, seeing that everything in our life, when we truly let go, when we truly surrender, we remove resistance and restlessness, everything in our life becomes divinely appointed. That's another live stream I'd like to lead one day. Divinely appointed from the people that you're here to serve, from the people that you're here to collaborate, from the people you are in a relationship with divinely appointed and the more you move we move through our reality with awareness and humility and consciousness the less randomness is in our life we see perfect synchronistic divine design and nothing else so on this note i wish you a beautiful beautiful day thank you for joining me if you're gonna watch this as a replay and um, i will see you next time